we're gonna explore some of the mica mines that are around and hopefully we can find some other cool minerals. We'll talk a little bit about some rocks um, and we'll go for a hike, shall we? The difference between rocks and minerals is that minerals make up rocks. So if you think of like a chocolate chip cookie, you put flour, uh, sugar, water, and then obviously the chocolate chips, and that's what makes that chocolate chip cookie. So very similar to rocks. For example, this is a piece of um, igneous rock, and in this igneous rock, we're gonna find quartz, mica, maybe feldspar. So lots of different minerals are actually making up this rock. So all rocks can be put into one of three categories. They can be either sedimentary, igneous or metamorphic rock. This one here and lots of the rocks actually at Gould Lake are igneous. So it's granite. It's actually a part of the Canadian Shield. So the Canadian Shield is made up mainly of igneous rock. How these rocks are formed is actually what tells you which category to place them in. So igneous rock, for example, like this one here, is formed when lava right, or liquid rock, rises to the surface, cools, and then solidifies. So all the minerals within this rock are usually pretty mixed up. So when you find an igneous rock, you'll notice lots of different minerals kind of scattered throughout. Sedimentary rock, like limestone, so you can see limestone along the highway in Kingston. Um, they're the really kind of layered gray um, cliffs that you see along the highway. Sedimentary rock is formed when lots of little particles, so pieces, little sediments, actually are compacted together, so lots of pressure. That usually happens underwater, so if you think about how heavy water can be, it takes a lot of time and a lot of pressure, but over time it compacts those sediments together, and um, that's when your sedimentary rock is formed. So limestone, for example, was formed by lots of pressure over time. So metamorphic rock is when pre-existing rocks are actually changed by heat and pressure. So metamorphic rocks will end up um, looking like pretty wavy and the waves are actually created by different minerals settling together. So minerals weigh a different amount. So if it's quartz, it might weigh more than mica, for example. So you'll end up with like wavy layers within the rock. This is a mica mine. Gould Lake's full of mica mines. So they used to come in here and they used to pull up all kinds of chunks of mica. So mica we know is a mineral and minerals are the things that make up rock. So mica has some really cool characteristics. One, it's pretty soft. So on the hardness scale, it's about a two or a three. Mica too is, or used to be used for lots of different things. One was that they used to use it as like an alternative to glass. So before glass was an option, they would use it on oven doors because it can actually, once you peel it apart, it can, you can see through it. Another use was for uh, electrical cords. So they used to put it in the electrical cords because it actually, um, it's a conductor. So electricity could go through it. And then the last thing that I know it was used for, there are probably other uses, but they used to put it in women's eye makeup, so eyeshadow. Um, and then they very quickly realized that it was not that good for eyeshadow because it was actually hurting people's eyes. So it was irritating people's eyes, so they stopped using it. Um, mica, this type of mineral, actually breaks up into layers. So I peeled this little bit off the top of this huge chunk of mica. So if you watch, Again, this mineral is super soft, but I can just peel layers and layers right off this piece of mica, which is pretty neat. Gould Lake was a huge mining area. So right now we're gonna go head to one of the bigger mines.
then this is a type of igneous rock. And uh, this here is actually granite. Rocks, in that rock cycle, they actually have to, um, they get broken down. So in order for other rocks to be created, they have to be broken down. And there's lots of ways that that actually happens. So one way is with water. So either rain or if you think of a river, erosion, right, will break those rocks down as the water's passing through that river. And it does take a really long time for that to happen, but that's one way that rocks can be broken down. Another way is through ice. So ice, what happens when it freezes is it actually expands. And when it expands, it actually has enough pressure to slowly break that rock apart. So if you think about this crack here or any of these cracks, um, water gets in there and say it pools, it can freeze and then slowly push that rock apart over many, many, many years. Trees can also break rocks apart. So the roots will spread out and the roots will actually find cracks in rocks. So lots of pine trees are actually really good with this. So they don't need a ton load of soil, but in order to hold themselves onto those rocks, they find those cracks. And uh, as those roots grow, they expand, right? They get bigger. And so those roots expanding can actually break those rocks apart. lots of mica mines around and they would have taken huge pieces of mica out but there are also lots of tester holes as well so it's all the stuff that they would have pulled out of the hole so all the stuff that they didn't want they left here um, which is great for us because we get to find all these really cool minerals there are lots of different types of minerals it depends on where you are. So minerals in Southern Ontario will be a little different from Northern Ontario. And then it'll be way different from like East to West Canada. The cool thing about rocks though, is that they all have different characteristics. So with a little bit of science, you can actually figure out which one you're looking at. I have two different types of minerals, but they do look fairly similar. They're white in color. Okay. Um, they're both a little shiny, but they are two different minerals. So how I can do this is there's a couple different ways. There's the most scale, which is actually testing the hardness of a rock. So all are mineral. All minerals have a different hardness. Okay. Um, another way I can do this is I can look at more closely how they reflect light. I might be able to look at how they break apart. So for example, this one here is calcite and calcite breaks apart squares but they're more like parallelogram shaped so they have angled sides on them so anytime you break this calcite apart the smaller you get they'll still break off into those little parallelograms quartz on the other hand though which is this one here will actually break off into little crystal shapes so if you were to put it under a microscope you'd notice that they're all little crystals okay so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to test the hardness of these two minerals. So one will be less hard than the other. And the way I'm going to be able to tell this is I have a piece of glass here. Quartz will scratch the glass, but calcite won't scratch the glass. So um, what that tells me is that the quartz is actually harder than the calcite. So calcite, I'm going to scratch. Okay on the glass okay there's one test okay we try a different side there's two okay and you can actually notice that there's a little bit of mineral dust on here so the calcite itself is actually coming off okay so the glass is actually harder than the calcite so if we put them in order it go calcite glass quartz on the hardness scale so far so now we're going to try the quartz. 
Okay, I'm gonna scratch it. You can kind of hear it. But if you look carefully, and if I kind of angle it a little bit, there's a scratch right here. So that means that I'm probably holding on to quartz. Okay, so calcite is a softer mineral than quartz is. At Good Lake in particular, we have quite a few different minerals. So we talked about mica, which is this one here. So the, the layered mineral that we talked about. We have calcite, which we talked about, quartz, but then we also have a few other ones. So this one here is kind of a greeny color. This one's actually apatite. So um, we actually have apatite in our teeth, which is pretty neat. Okay. We have iron pyrite. So some people might actually know it as fool's gold. So iron pyrite is a, kind of a rusty color. If you find rocks in the forest that look like they're covered in rust, it's probably because at some point in time it had iron pyrite in it. As soon as iron pyrite though gets exposed to um, water and it's uh, uh, over time it starts to rust and actually break down. And then we also have uh, blue quartz, so same as the regular quartz that we have, but it's just a different type. So you can see the, the color difference there. So again, the blue quartz will break off into little crystals, and that's one way we can tell that it's blue quartz if we were to put it under a microscope. <music>